Um, so I'm going to present our uh, content again. And with this material, we had a really good discussion uh, surrounding pattern matching. Um, John, what was the, the state or the pronunciation, uh, the Perl pronunciation? It's not regex, it's regex. regex? Regex, yep, okay. Because regular expression, so regex. I'm, I'm going to try yeah. to use that term <laughs> and, and change my vocabulary uh, as we discuss this, but regex. So I'm going to start with the, excuse me, let me make sure I hit share so that it's actually presenting. I'm going to try to start out with tools. The chapter is quite lengthy. And as we started the the earlier sections of this chapter, uh, John uh, filled in quite a, uh, quite a bit of material. And John, thank you very much for doing that, especially as a package maintainer for String R and, and contributing to it. Um, I'm gonna start with the tool section. It's about the halfway point and it should conclude, hopefully. Uh, did we have any plans on starting chapter 15 today or do we have the full time for, for just the finishing of this? Purely chapter 14 today, and then uh, next week we'll start 15, or in two weeks we'll start 15. Very good. Okay. So this section is about tools, and the section you'll learn a wide array of string functions that will let you determine which strings match a pattern, find the position within a uh, match, extract the contents of that match, replace any matches with new values, and then splitting a string uh, based on a particular match. Now there's a section here uh, I excluded from the presentation because it was just that lengthy. Uh, what it was doing is showing you that it was an email uh, syntax that was, it was a regex syntax that was searching for an email pattern. And so it was a very long, long section, but it is a value added because it is a true form. You can deploy that uh, in a uh, uh, email type format or searching your email uh, and it would uh, work, but yeah, it's just ugly. It's really ugly. Um, so a word of caution before we continue, because the regular expressions are so powerful, it's easy to try and solve every problem with a single regular expression. In the words of Jamie uh, Zawinski, uh, some people, when confronted with a problem, they think, I know, I'll just use regular expressions. And now they have two problems. That is so true to the nth degree. You can't just immediately jump into regular expressions and expect it to solve the world's problems. It becomes extremely complicated. So uh, although being part of your tool belt, um, I would say, not use it with caution because it is a value that you should should uh, deploy. Just be careful because you don't want it to be a Cinderella slipper and solve all of your problems. There are better suited tools uh, for, for pattern matching uh, beyond just regular expressions. Um, so with that, quick story. I said, I use regular expressions uh, for a, a work on HTML documents. As a tech writer, um, I search through huge quantities of HTML files looking for particular patterns. A uh, great example would be misspelled words uh, or uh, possibly a file pattern, you know, pointing at a image or pointing at a figure pointing at, you know, some other text. Uh, I use regular expressions quite often. I don't do it in R. So this chapter has been very fulfilling uh, in this regard. Breaking the problem down into smaller manageable chunks is a key. Using visual drawings, if it helps to write out your expression, the point, don't start from a difficulty first. When I search for patterns, usually I will try to find visually what that pattern is, and I will deploy a different search feature before jumping into regular expressions. Often you will find your pattern, but then you will need uh, uh, extensions onto that. So you have to build your pattern a little bit larger. Um, so how do we detect matches? So the first one is we're just using a string vector, uh, apple, banana, and pear. And then we're doing a string detect and then using X with, uh, sorry, passing the variable X uh, with the pattern E. I wanna know where E shows up. So within these three different points, you have true, false, and true. Well, it doesn't, using string detect doesn't give you the pattern, it just shows you whether it matches logically Boolean. Uh, yes, it's there, no, it's not there. When we use true and false, obviously true is a one and false is a zero. So you can also iterate over that as well. Making functions like sum and mean, uh, mean are very useful in this context. 
from a statistical modeling point, you can ingest a large quantity of maybe a PDF or, or some kind of CSV file or whatever, whatever form of, of media you're, you're searching, and then find that true and false, that zero and one, and then do a, a uh, sum or a mean on that. Um, the next one is using that carrot. Um, that's a, uh, is it, it's not an anchor. What was the carrot used for, John? The, it's, it means this plus T. So it's uh, a start. The carrot means start of the, the okay. text. All right. So whatever term we're looking for and then ending in T, correct, is how we want to read that. Um, uh, start starting with T. So looking at the start of the word for the letter T. The, if you were to use the R side of this, and I can definitely pull this up if we would like to, but um, there's a words data set uh, that is contained within string R. And so that's that's what we're actually iterating over. Uh, we're looking for the sum using string detect. And then anything that has a true value, we're just going to count those values. So in this case, it's coming up with the number 65. If we were to do a mean value of string detect using the words, and we want A-E-I-O-U, all of our vowels, and then the ending mark with the uh, dollar sign, that's going to uh, give us a, a mean uh, point of, of all of the quantity of that file or that data set. When you cr create a large logical condition, you may be able to break down into similar terms. So for example, we have no vowels, uh, and then using a not string to text. So this is going to be a reverse. Okay, you're gonna invert your trues and falses uh, using that same AEIOU. Uh, and then we also have another one where we have string to text and then we're doing a caret with caret AEIOU um, plus a ending dollar sign. Um, and just to so interject, I'm, that is ahead, an, one unfortunate thing in uh, regex is that okay. Carrot outside of brackets means start of the text. Carrot inside of brackets means not. And I see. So you're not using yeah. the exclamation point as an inversion then. Yeah. Okay. Um, and that's just, that's how it is. Like, okay. uh, it's very unfortunate that whoever invented this did that. <laughs> it, it, that's not an R situation though, correct? No. Or that's, that's what that is your expression. Right yep. Okay. Very good. Very good. Um, a common use of string detect is to match a pattern. Uh, so ex again, example, we're using the words data set using a string detect words and then with an X dollar sign. Uh, so this is going to pull out box, sex, six, and tax. Okay. Anything that, that uh, ends in X. If we do a substring with words and then do a, a uh, X dollar sign, we're going to get the same pattern. So what we're trying to say here is that you can do this in two different ways. Uh, one using the square brackets, the other one is just calling the string subset and then passing the data set that you're searching for. Okay. Note the first example syntax is, is foreign to me. I've not been familiar with the square brackets. Um, I would hmm. probably follow the second pattern. Uh, would any member like to express uh, what is happening with that particular square bracket? John, I'm really thinking of you on this. Oh, um, so that's base R. That is just okay. so square brackets subsetting. It's just saying um, from words, select all the entries where this is true. So okay. it's um, it is a yeah way to select a subset of whatever thing you have. So subsetting with base R uses square brackets. If we use tidy verse, then it's just passing the call or passing the data set to the function. Um, in this case, it's just, it is a function that basically wraps that all together for you. Okay, That does the, the subsetting. This next example, we're creating a data frame, uh, a table with the words data set, um, and then we're iterating using a, a loop to go through this. So I equals sequence along, and then again, the, the data set word. Um, no, excuse me, we're looking for word. And then, what, I'm, I'm failing on this pattern, this sequence along. Um, so it's just, that one is just saying it wants um, a, a sequence that has the length that's the same length as word and starts with one. Four characters then? So no, for the number of entries in, oh, sorry. Oh, sequence along. Oh, it, well, yeah, word. So <laughs> look at it one line at a time because Tibble will like evaluate the full line 
So okay. word, the, the column word in this tibble is words. And so in this case, um, well, it's actually longer than that. It is, you know, the full sequence of all of the uh, words in the words vector. Okay. So the length of the word column is the same as the length of the words vector. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So then I equals sequence along word. Um, it's saying it's a sequence that's the same length as word starting with one. And so it, it, in this case, you could have typed words and got in, gotten exactly the same result because a okay. sequence along word is the same as a sequence along words. Um, does that make sense? Because that confused me for a second looking at this. I want well, what we're doing is looking at a, a three-letter word that ends with X, and we're counting the number right. uh, in the data set using that. Uh, right. So we're giving thing. it we're just giving it an index. You could also okay. say I equals um, a row number from the dplyr function row number. That's all we're doing here is just giving everything an index within that okay. set. So the integers at the end is telling us the quantity of hits that the... No, it's no. the row number that that hit I was see. on. It's the, okay. what word number is that? In the that words makes sense. Vector. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah. does I so, just go up to four? No, I goes up to however long. So the words vector from uh, Stringer is uh, nine hundred and eighty words. So I is just from one to nine hundred and eighty. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah. So could you have done I is equal from one colon to n row? words um or is it not a data frame it so it, it is a data frame okay. well words is sorry words is not a word so <laughs> words not word. <laughs> words okay. is just a character vector so it's it's okay. 980 words okay um and so you could say uh from i to length word or okay. length yeah. words Okay. Actually, length word would also work, but <laughs> words yeah. is what, what we want there. So it's just saying, yeah, it's just an index from 1 to 980, because that's how long words is. Um, dplyr has the, was it row underscore number function? I'm kind of surprised he didn't use that here, um, because that's all it is. It's just... Do well, there's a there's a statement that I made last week about this particular chapter in the new version of the book. Uh, they the content is vastly different, so there's a chance that it may have been replaced. Yeah. Um, I stuck with the older version of the book while I was putting the presentation together. That's fine. All of these like it is useful to see all the alternate ways you can do things in R, but you only have to only one of them has to really stick in your brain. So. Um, so sequence along is useful to know. It's um, it's a good way to say just I want indexes. I want integers that go along with this this vector that I'm passing into it. So whether the vector vector is the column word, or it could be the vector words, or it could have been um, I don't know uh, other things <laughs> like it, it, but it's a it'll be a sequence that's the length of whatever you put into it. it starts with one. So it's just a way to index things to to put a number on them. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. The next point that we're, we're going after here is a variation in the string detect and string count functions. Rather than a simple yes or no, it tells you how many matches there are in a string. So again, we're creating a, a vector here, uh, a apple, banana, and pear. It's the same sequence we have, but then we're doing a string count. We're passing the variable x and then looking for the number a. What we have is one, three, and one. And if you look at this, uh, apple only has one a character, banana has three, and then pear has one. Okay. You can also do that mean value. And that's just, again, passing this string count uh, in the words A-E-I-O-U. Uh, and we're getting a, a mean, an average of those uh, counts. It's natural to use string count with mutate. Uh, so if we're creating a data frame, passing over to mutate, uh, looking for vowels, string count word, A-E-I-O-U, and then consonants, string count, uh, where it is not A-E-I-O-U. So again, this is going to give us that uh, index correct, or, or our index is one through 10. Um, 
and then the, the, the quantity of findings within that regular expression, um, and then the, the number of findings with the consonants. Right. Uh, we have 970 more rows that are not included in here. Uh, what was the number again that it's you had mentioned, John? 980. So the, that is that tracks. There are a total of 980 rows. Um, again, the data frame words is a part of the string R package. So if you do want to deploy any of these uh, code blocks, they will operate. They will work. Okay. Um, there, there are matches that never overlap. Um, for example, uh, ABA, excuse me, AB, AB, ABA. Uh, how many times will the pattern ABA match? Well, regular expressions says two, not three. And what this, this was a little confusing for me. So when you look at the pattern ABA and you're passing it over, you have one, two, three, and then one, two, three. The, the, if, if you're training your eye on this particular, uh, and there's a word for this type of, of uh, this type of word, uh, there's a name for this type of word. But when we're looking at the pattern, it starts at the very beginning and then ends at the very end. So as a computer, it's just iterating over it. From a human, we can say, well, ABA, and then we have ABA again, and then we have ABA again, so it should be three. No, that's not accurate. And so therefore the return value is two. It only matches twice, okay? If we wanna see this uh, string view all, then you can see how that pattern was generated. I found this very helpful. Um, I caught myself trying to figure out how the uh, regular expression was was calculating over this this term. Yeah, I didn't know about uh, string view and string view all before um, ready, you know reading this chapter for the notes uh, or for the okay. learning objectives. That's those just those two functions alone are so useful. If you're going to be using regex at all, you right. probably want to see, okay, is it working? you know is this pattern working how I think it's working? And so those two functions are really useful. <laughs> I will be using them quite a lot. I, I have a question. So how would you make it fit so that it finds you the three instances? Uh, uh, there, as I say, there isn't three. That's that's kind of the whole purpose of this particular mm -hmm. syntax. There isn't actually three. The human would count it as three because we're looking at patterns, but the computer is only matching each one and then counting it as it goes. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Well, I, no, I, to, but to find like how many unique times does ABA appear mm -hmm. in this word allowing overlap? I don't, regex is not the right answer to do that. Um, I see. Okay. And I think what I would do is something about um, count how many times it, it appears in ABAB, you know, in the full string, mm -hmm. and then cut off the first letter and count how many times it appears in that um something like that like iterate through yeah. the whole thing you'd have to write your own thing to kind of do that yeah. and figure out which ones aren't are, are overlaps and which ones aren't i don't like it would be a whole process um it is kind of interesting that he just kind of throws out there this won't work to do what you think it'll do right i'm not going to mention I whether there is an alternative um I was just wondering because um, it, there must be software that, you know, already does this. But when you're looking at a DNA, right, kilobases, or sometimes it's millions of base pairs, and you're looking for a specific pattern that would represent a gene or like a restriction enzyme site, you want every single instance. So you would want it to give you the three instances because each of these would be a functional unit, you know, within a, a piece of DNA. And so, so that's, that's where my question was coming from. That's interesting. That, yeah. uh, uh, let me try to search and see if I can no, find... The, don't don't oh. worry about it, Ryan, because there, there are programs, you yeah. know, like Snapstream okay. that will do that for you. So, yeah. There are certainly R packages that would do it specifically yeah. okay. for genes as well. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know them, but I know that, uh, you know, R is very big in biology, so... I'm, right. I'm sure yeah. there are things to do it, but okay. that's, yeah, that is an interesting use case. I, I would say I would not use Stringer for, um, like gene alignment type of work, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know, okay. there are packages that <laughs> think in that alphabet a little bit better. Um, okay. so. so yeah, sorry about the, the tangent. <laughs> okay. 
throughout throughout this entire chapter, uh, John, when I commit or, or we accept the commit um, or pull request, I have not completed any of these exercises. There were quite a few, and I realized as I'm authoring this, this presentation um, how many times the exercises show up. Uh, we're going to find that almost at every iteration of a section, you're going to have an exercise that goes along with it. Um, I would say there's probably 50 to 60 questions in this chapter. Um, so I feel welcomed to uh, go through it if you want to call me, text me, uh, we'll, we'll, we can work through them. I don't mind. Um, <laughs> given the time I was putting this together, I, I didn't mess with them. Um, the next is going to be extracting matches, uh, again, using the function string extract. Uh, so in this case, uh, we're using the data uh, package Harvard sentences. And I do have a link to that. This is a, uh, maybe it's not, I thought that was link, uh, uh, linked it's showing as blue it tells me that it's it not registering but should be a link no oh, there it is never mind okay. i didn't give it focus to the screen um within that we're looking for the link length of sentences so there's 720 sentences in this harvard data package uh there was a uh i didn't copy it out of the textbook but there was a reason that this sentence function works uh there's a term for this these harvard sentences uh What's the matching function of it? It's not important. I'll find it. <laughs> um, anyway, there's 720 of these sentences. Um, so the birch canoe slid on the smooth planks, uh, glue the sheet to the dark blue blackboard. Um, I, it had something to do with vocabulary uh, or pronunciation. Yeah, it's for standardized testing of um, different things with voice, pronunciation. Um, I, think it, I think it includes like, uh, lots of standard consonant and vowel combinations. And there so if you have everyone, if you have someone read all of these sentences, I think the idea is you can stitch together pretty much anything in English from the pieces of sound that you get. So if they're training a new um, like voice for something, I think that these are sense. the packages you use for that because then you that get enough to do everything basically. Very good. So it says, imagine we want to find a sentence that contains a color. Uh, note, I'm changing the structure from British English uh, of color with the U uh, back to uh, American English form. So uh, just know that, that I am manipulating some of the syntax here. Um, creating a vector of color names that uh, turn, uh, sorry, then turn the uh, single regular, turn that into a single regular expression. So we're using colors uh, as the uh, variable or the object that we're creating and using red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. We're doing a color match uh, object uh, using uh, the string concatenate or string combine uh, with the colors package and then collapse, uh, excuse me, colors uh, object uh, and then collapsing with the pipe. So when we print color match, what we're going to end up getting is red pipe, orange pipe, yellow pipe, green pipe, blue pipe, purple. And then we select the sentence that contains the color that we're looking for and extract the color uh, to figure out which one it is. So again, another object has color uh, using the string subset, uh, passing the, the sentences uh, data set, uh, and then the object color match. With that, it's now creating another object matches with string extract, and then again, has color and then color match. And then we're looking at the uh, uh, creation or the, the uh, object uh, matches, uh, we're printing out the head of the match. So we have blue, blue, red, 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 blue. Note the string extract only extracts the first match. So if we want uh, Brian, more- one, go ahead. sorry, can, can I interrupt you? Can you go back again? Yep, I sure can. So, okay, you created a vector called colors and then color match. I think I'm not understanding. So why did you make, need to make this color match? variable? We were looking at the entire data set, the 720 sentences, and we're looking for the patterns of these particular colors. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple. And okay. we want to pull out, out of those sentences and create another object or another data set, another data frame uh, with those uh, findings. Okay. So, so what is um, string C? That's uh, string combined. So it's just combining all of those colors into one character. 
And the reason you need that is otherwise, most things in Stringer, if you give it two vectors, it's going to say it's going to match the first thing in vector one with the first thing in vector two, second thing oh. in vector one with the second thing in vector two, et cetera. And here we want to match this one vector to, we want to use this one vector to check everything in vector one. Otherwise, vector yeah. one, we would be looking for red, vector two, we'd look for orange, vector three, we'd look for yellow, et cetera. I see. And we don't want to do that. So we want to collapse them all into one search term. It's funny because I was just, uh, okay. I was playing yeah. around to see if there are any sentences that don't have any of the words that are in words. Mm -hmm. And I like replicated the same problem. So I, the answer is no, none of the sentences and sentences are so weird that they don't have any of the words in words. Um, but I was able to check that while we were um, talking. So using that Got same okay. same pattern. Okay. The, the one the one thing that I wanted to highlight though is the the string extract as a function within string r it only matches the first pattern and that's a regular expression thing that you have to make sure that you remember as well. If your pattern that you're searching for is contained within uh, a larger set, it's only going to pick out the first time and then iterate to the next line uh, or iterate to the next uh, uh, read. You're not going to get all of the patterns throughout the entire. There's a different way of using that. I think it's string extract all, uh, yep. I think is what patterns everything in that one line. Um, this is a very, very, very important, especially looking at textual data um, or character data, I guess, because of the fact that if you only match the first line and then iterate to the second line, you may have missed out on some important information. So using string extract all, you're searching that entire line for multiple patterns. Um, and that's, again, why you only get the blue, blue, red, 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 and blue. Uh, with more, uh, we can do a, a count of the hits that end up uh, being uh, satisfied. The, the, the function or the regular expression is satisfied. Uh, and so we're passing sentences. Uh, again, John, this was the base R format so of square brackets. You're just subsetting from sentences the ones that have more than one match. So then we're counting those, passing yep. the sentences uh, object uh, with that color match object, and then we're counting greater than one. So string view all is going to give you the more and the color match, and that's where we start to highlight. Um, it's kind of hard to see on the screen, but um, blue and red are both highlighted at the same time, uh, green and then this is where things get kind of funny because it did match the pattern in flickered. Uh, red is in flickered. Um, and then the sky is uh, tinged with orange red. Okay. Can I ask a, a kind of dumb question? So um, is it because, so sentences is a data frame with all of these sentences or what, what structure is that? Because I was wondering if it were just a vector, right, of I don't know if you could even have this words. Couldn't you do something like colors in, you know, or like match everything to like a vector of colors? I don't know what the syntax is called. It's like a um, percent in percent. Um, like, are you talking like wild cards? Maybe no, not wild cards. No, no. It's, I think it's a, a it, so that's wire. yeah. In it, in is a base R. Um, function for um, this whole thing is somewhere in this vector is what you're mm -hmm. saying. So if I say, you know, like um, this, that comes out as true one in one to 10 because one mm -hmm. is in that vector. But if I try to say, um, you know, like A in AB, that's false because it's looking for exactly A in exactly AB. Now, if I say mm -hmm. A in AB, that, that comes out true because yeah. A is in that vector. But it's, yeah. so it's yeah, Stringer yeah, yeah. is all about dealing with things more complicated than that, basically. Got it, okay. Awesome, thank you, John. Um, so if we get, if we want all the matches within our, our 
uh, point, we have to use the string extract all, and that's going to give us a more extensive uh, pattern matching. So in the first sentence, we have blue and red. In the second sentence, we have green and red. And in the third, we have orange and red. Now, what you want to make sure that you're familiar with, though, is it's just pulling out the pattern. So red in the second sentence technically isn't a color. It just happened to match in Flickered. Um, so that may throw your data off slightly. Uh, you may have to alter slight, uh, you may have to alter your pattern uh, that you're looking for. Um, I don't want to put any exclusions in here, but that could be where you have anchor points uh, that you can you can search for. Because red is part of the word flickered, uh, the pattern you can say anything before that. Uh, if it if it's included in a, a, a larger uh, word, then that's not actually a pattern we want. Does that make sense? I may have just confused it, uh, <laughs> confused with that statement. Um, if we pass the argument simply as true, string extract all. Uh, excuse me. Simplify, not simply. I'm sorry. Thank you. Simplify. Uh, if we pass the argument simplify equals true, then the string extract all will return a matrix with short matches expanded to the same length as the longest. So in this example, we have string extract all, uh, more color match, and then simplify as true. Um, and this is all within one line, correct? It's just a, yep. a combined form of it? Yes. Uh, same goes with our uh, object uh, combining A, B, sorry, A, A, B. Notice the, the uh, uh, double brackets, uh, double quotation marks, and then A, B, and C. If we do a string extract all past the object and then go A through Z, uh, simplify equals true. We're going to get A, no pattern, no pattern, A, B, and then A, B, C. And I think this was an example earlier uh, last week, correct? Where we were looking for patterns and it iterated through or it counted up as it was finding. Uh, maybe. <laughs> no, I may be, no, there's another, I, I may be thinking of another book club. Uh, yeah. We were talking about iterating and, and adding things okay. up. Um, no. Within the grouped max matches section, now we're going to start combining some of these special characters, whether it be the pipe, uh, the carrot, uh, square brackets. Um, so we're passing an object down, sorry, we're creating an object noun uh, with the contents of, of, in quotation marks, a pipe the, and then space, uh, carrot, and then the plus sign. So if we want to know if it has a noun, we're going to pass sentences over to string subset, looking for the object noun, um, and then head of 10 has noun, string extract, and then noun. What we end up getting is the smooth, the sheet, the depth, a chicken, and the parked. What, we're, what this pattern is doing is it's flipping back and forth between these. So it's saying a or the. Find everything that starts with either a or the. So in that, the form of how that pipe was used, it's the or statement. So we have the, 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 a, and the. And then in the second line, we have the, 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 and a. There's a second point to this, and it's it's anything after, correct? Well, it's so the space it, and then everything after. I was going to say, the, the space is actually important there, that it specifies then you need to have a space. After a or the, there has to be a space. Okay. And then there has to be anything that's not a space, because in, inside of brackets, Carrot means it's not, not. Not space, okay. So not space, and then plus means one or more. So there's one or more characters that are not a space. Very good. And that's how it's getting the double double words in this particular finding, correct? Yeah. In pattern search? Yep. Uh, string extract will give the complete match. String match gives the individual component. Um, so if we want has noun, and then we uh, pass that to string match, again, using the object noun, uh, we're going to get that uh, column or form. So the first one is just saying the smooth, the sheet, the depth. And then in the second and third columns, we're getting just the pattern, either A or the. Again, that's the, the terms that we're searching for. And then the third column would be the word after following it. 
Uh, unsurprisingly, our uh, heuristic for detecting nouns is poor and also picks up adjectives like smooth and parked. There's a uh, comment here about that in the book. That's an extension. Um, mm -hmm. If your data is a tibble, it's often easier to use a uh, tidy R and then extract. It works like the string match, but requires you to name the matches, which are then placed in new columns. So we've got a tibble uh, with sentence equal sentences, passing it to the tidy R extract function uh, with the data set sentence, combining both article and noun, and then that same pattern that we were looking for. And then we have any remove equals false as a, a uh, add on to that uh, tidy R extract function. So what we have is the sentence itself and then the, the article that we're matching and then the noun that goes along with it. What I found important here is the comment about differences between noun and adjectives. So the we're matching the pattern, either the or a, and if it doesn't find it in the sentence, it's just gonna pass it as NA. It doesn't exist, it doesn't match then whatever noun went along with it. Yeah. Which may or not may or may not actually be a noun because of the simple <laughs> simple pattern. <laughs> I think so an important thing on this is that the parentheses are important in these patterns, that they are telling it what are the groups. And so these columns are picking out parentheses thing one and then parentheses thing two. So if you scroll back up so we can see the pattern, um, it's saying extract, uh, the column names will be article and noun and the pattern to look for, see the parentheses in that pattern are what define what goes in each column. Um, and that's a really value or like useful thing in regex is, is the parentheses creating groups. You, um, I don't know if we, I think in the next section, we'll talk about that a little bit more. <laughs> in the this first line, or sorry, this first uh, tidy R extract, the sentence is pulling just the the sentence from the data frame, correct? Yes. Yep. Okay. And the next is going to be replacing uh, replacing matches, uh, so we can use the function string replace or string replace all. Um, again starting with apple, pear, and banana, the, this pattern is repeated throughout this chapter, uh, but we're just using a string of place with that object X, uh, anything that matches A-E-I-O-U, and then replacing it with a, a hyphen or a, a, a dash. I think that's hyphen. Um, so A-E-I-O-U is a vowel. It's a pattern, A-E-I-O and U. Don't think of it as vowels in the English language. Think of it as characters that we're replacing. Right. It just happens to be that they're vowels. Um, so we want to find the match and then replace that match with a hyphen instead. So we found an A, replace it with a hyphen. We found the E, replace it with a hyphen. Again, keeping in mind that we're not using extract all, sorry, replace all here. So it only replaced the first finding within that uh, vector or that, that string vector. Um, the, pat or the word pair, uh, it only matched the E not the A. And then the same thing goes with banana. Uh, it found the first A, replaced it with a hyphen, but left the second and third A. If we do a string replace all in the same point, now it's going to run across the entire string vector. This is uh, important in the context of doing, uh, like, it's not pattern matching, but uh, doing finding and replacing terms uh, can be very powerful, especially when you are making vast changes throughout an entire document. Uh, you can search for one uh, pattern and say, just replace everything. Um, it's really good if you have misspelled words and that's the, that's the pattern you're looking for. Um, so at any rate, uh, with string replace all, you can perform multiple replacements by supplying a named vector. So we create object X with one house, two cars, and three people. And then we're going to use the string replace all, again, using the object X with a one, replace it with the number one, two with the number two, and three with the word three. So as we generate out, it's going to say one house, two cars, and three people. We're just replacing the numeric value of one, two, and three with the word one, two, and three. Um, helpful 
uh, if you're dealing in databasing and with uh, phone numbers, uh, syntax matching, or uh, that's a term, there's a pattern matching. Uh, a, uh, that doesn't matter. I'll keep going. <laughs> um, the second one is sentences. Uh, we're, gonna, we're going to pass the uh, object sentences to the string replace. Uh, and again, John had mentioned the parentheses are important here. So we're going to say not space and then uh, not sp or space, not space again, space, not space. Uh, and then uh, the numbers are the double slashes. That's a uh, uh, pattern matching as well. That's, that's referencing the group. So it's saying okay. group one, then group three, then group two. So it's okay. parentheses set one, parentheses set two, or three, parentheses set two. In other words, what it's doing is it's swapping, it's putting the third word in front of the second word in each of these. Very so good. the original was the birch canoe, now it's the canoe birch. It was glue the sheet, now it's glue sheet the. And so it's referencing whatever you find in match three, put it into position two. Whatever you find in match two, put it into position three in this replace. okay um so that's where that's where the parentheses are really powerful that you can refer back to this thing that i found is now slash slash one that's the first thing i found second thing i found is slash slash two and the reason there's the double slash is it's just slash but you need to escape the slash so it's slash slash that's where the devils come in okay yeah that makes sense um if we want to split strings, uh, we can I, use the Sorry, and I did want to just interrupt that. You know, we've only got like five minutes left. Oh, okay. Sorry. So let's, um, uh, I don't know what we want to do. Um, I don't want to take a third week on this chapter. No, I, I think that would um, be. And so I want to say when you're presenting a chapter, I think we've gotten too far into, we've gotten used to showing every detail. and. These let's chapters think are it, too big. Yeah, let's start trying to go more to, you know, we're doing a summary of the chapter. We are expecting everyone to read the chapter. We'll dive deeper into things that are interesting or okay. um, whatnot. But uh, I think we need to try to cut back or we're going to spend the next year and a half reading this book. <laughs> and uh, like, uh, I don't think we want to devote that much time to it. So um, there are, you know, We've got lots of examples. Um, there are some other base R um, functions that use regex. Um, the the dir one actually, uh, I'm pretty sure I've used regex in that way, where you're just trying to find like um, files that have RMD is the example here, and yeah, or that end in RMD specifically. I don't think I had ever heard of apropos before this chapter. I um it that's that's an, an interesting function to know about. And like if if you're trying to find a variable that you defined somewhere and you can't remember what you named it, like um that's interesting. <laughs> like, I find so so the head directory or sorry just the dir uh, command um, this would be in a similar use of the find function. Uh, and, and if you're in bash, uh, find is a, a way of doing uh, namespace searching, uh, the file extension type searching, um, whatever it is ending in R RMD. Uh, you can also do a find uh, in path with a name wildcard.rmd, and it will have a similar context. Again, we're staying within R as a service of using regular expressions. Uh, there are other ways that you can use the same patterns outside of, of R as well. Um, you're right, John, that was a, that was a good one to uh, add in, uh, especially if you have a very large amount of files uh, and you want to iterate or, or search for everything that just says RMD, uh, find me all the files that, that list that. Um, does anybody have any questions uh, with our time? I'm sorry that it's taken this long to get here uh, with with going through the chapter.
I'd be more than willing and happy if anybody were to uh, contact in Slack. Uh, I can go different directions on both the R side. I'm not as familiar with the string R package. I would like to uh, gain some experience with it with any of our users' questions, uh, but I can also uh, work outside of R if that is also a need for the team as well. All right. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. But thank you so much, Ryan. Yeah, that was very, very good. I, I feel like uh, there are so many nuances to this. Um, and it was definitely very worthwhile going over. I, was, it. Um, I don't necessarily use these things, but um, it's good for me at least to know what is out there. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's one of those chapters where um, it, it's one that you, I, I can imagine reading it multiple times, like yes. going back to look up, wait, how do you do that thing? And it's got references for um, a lot of stuff, you know, as far as uh, regex. I use the, um, I think I had brought that up before, this site um, and just Google searches often for regex. Um, that site that I loaded up lets you put in something and then test out different regex patterns to see mm -hmm. what it'll hit. Um, and then it also has like a little bit of help, like a cheat sheet of, of common things that you might need to use that kind of thing. So those are useful. Um, but it helps you build the pattern. Yeah. So if you if yeah. you were to text your or sorry paste your your oh, search function, yeah. and then you can actually help build your your expression here. I see. Um, I see. Oh, that's very. Helpful. But it also gives you uh, exactly what each of the the points are telling you, or what you're what you're oh. searching for. So, right. This is a very very yeah. helpful site. <laughs> so yeah, I use that one wow. a, a lot. Um, but also the book, you know, using it to, to look through all the different like rules and review the rules as you need them um, mm -hmm. and all the different tools that are available in Stringer because there are a lot. Um, all right. So with that, uh, chapter 15 is on factors. And does anyone here want to uh, dig into factors or should I ask in the Slack? Do it. So that's right. for the fourth, right? Yes. So we yeah. will not meet on the 27th. We will meet on the fourth. We will try to do factors in one week. Um, yes. <laughs> so everyone read it and come armed with questions if necessary. And then we can just kind of summarize what is there and discuss what we didn't quite understand. Um, that sounds good. Becky, unless you wanted to do it, I didn't mean to just, you know. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. I'm fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, cool. I will see everyone in two weeks then. Okay. Thanks so All much, right. Ryan. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good week. Bye.